Good evening and welcome to Church School Saturday with Lady Angela, where we are seeing the word, hearing the word, and doing the word. Today's lesson is from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 30, and it's titled Freedom for the Future, Hope for the Future. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you and thank you for being that hope dealer for us, God, allowing us the opportunity to connect with your word and remember your promises, God, so that we know that we have hope for our future because we hope in you. We ask even now as we process through today's sum up for today's lesson, God, that you allow our ears to hear, God, that you will allow our hearts to receive receive and God allow our spirits to understand. We bless you and we praise you even now in Jesus name. Amen. We would all agree that today's world is a world that we live in that is a sin sick world. There are all kinds of things that are happening today that we would never have imagined would be happening today. We're talking about shootings. We're talking about altercations. We're talking about depravities that have never happened before. Things where people have a disregard for life itself. We're living in a sin sick world. And as things have continued to progress, we recognize that back in Genesis chapter three, when the, the fruit was taken from the tree against the directive that was given by God and Adam and Eve ingested that fruit that God said for them not to even touch, that sin entered the world and it changed our relationship with God. God in his awesomeness created a plan that would bring us back to right relationship with him. But it was because of sin that we as people in the earth now have to deal with suffering. It is because of sin that we have to deal with the depravities of man. It is because of sin that we have to deal with the inhumaneness of humanity. The impact of the fall of man is documented in Genesis chapter 3, and it is in that documentation that we understand that there will be a battle that continues to go on until the coming of Christ. Jesus would come and he would crush the enemy's head, but the enemy would bite his heel. It is in this, in this passage that we understand that sin was brought into the world and sin has a negative impact in the world that we're living with even today. We recognize because God is sovereign. We recognize because God has a plan for us. We recognize because God's intention is to give us a hope and a future that our latter will be greater. Yes, we'll deal with suffering. Yes, we'll have to endure. Yes, we'll have to patiently endure. But God will cause our latter to be greater. It is because of the ultimate gift that he gave. God the Father gave his son. God the Son gave his life. And God the Holy Spirit intercedes. Today's lesson talks about the intercession of the Holy Spirit. And there's a word that's used for the Holy Spirit in the New Testament that's paraclete. That word is the advocate. That word is the one who stands up and speaks for. God has positioned us with his spirit, the advocate who stands ready to speak on our behalf, who stands ready to intercede on our behalf, who stands ready to stand for us 
in the will of God. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks on our behalf when we don't know what to say. It is the Holy Spirit that prays for us when we don't know how to pray. It is the Holy Spirit that translates our groanings and our moanings when we don't know how to articulate what we're feeling. This great gift was given to us by our father who loves us unconditionally. He understood that living in this sin sick world that we would need a helper. So he sent the Holy Spirit to be the aid that we need that leads us into all truth and reminds us of God's truth. The Bible says that we should be waiting, we should be watching, and we should be working. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good for them who are called according to his purpose. God has called us by his purpose, for purpose, in purpose, with purpose to fulfill his purpose in the earth. It doesn't matter what we encounter. It doesn't matter what engages with us. We know that God has a plan that supersedes every plot of the enemy. We know that everything that we process through, everything that we progress through, eventually positions us in the midst of manifested promise. God always allows us to go through in order to get to. He never lets us go through something just to be going through. The process may purge us of some things. The process may prune us of some things. The process may deposit some things in us. The process may direct us to where he needs us to be, but the process will ultimately deliver us directly into purpose. God foreknew us. The Bible says before we were formed in our mother's wombs, he knew us. God foreknew. God predestined. He ordered our steps. He designed the plan for our lives. And he allows us to walk out the steps that he's ordained as we listen to him and follow his direction to fulfill what he has intended. He called us to do the things that he's called us to do. And in calling us, he justified us to do the things that he's called us to do. And in justifying us as we walk through the will of God, as we perform his purpose, as we walk out his heart's desire, God will glorify us. He takes us from foreknown to predestined, to called, to justified, and then to glorified. God is developing each and every one of us into a hope dealer. When we recognize how God has taken us from a place of sin, how he's taken us from a place of iniquity, how he's taken us from that place of darkness and introduced us to his marvelous light and empowered us by his spirit to do the things that he's designed for us to do. We not only embrace the hope that he gives us through the truth of his word, but we will deliver that hope to everyone who crosses our paths. We'll deliver that hope to everyone who we encounter. We'll deliver the hope that was delivered to us because we'll want everyone to know that someone who can save any one. God is developing each and every one of us into a hope dealer. Today's hymn is one I didn't know before today's lesson preparation. It's titled, Lord, I Hear of Showers of Blessing. This hymn was written by Elizabeth Codner in 1860. The music was composed by William Bachelor Bradbury in 1862. Now, 
Elizabeth was interested in the mission field from an early age, and she wrote two publications, one entitled The Missionary Ship in 1853, and the other entitled The Missionary Farewell in 1854. Both of these publications were relating to the Patagonia Mission, which was later called the South American Missionary Society. I didn't find a whole lot about Elizabeth when I was studying and researching about this hymn, but I did learn that she married William Penfather at the Mildmay Protestant Mission in London. I also learned that she edited the mission's monthly women's work in the Great Harvest Field. This woman at the age of 17 was editing a magazine for the Patagonia Mission. This hymn that she wrote was written and it is a prayer. This hymn has six verses and a refrain. It, it was the fifth verse that jumped out at me, although the entire prayer is beautiful. The fifth verse reads, love of God, so pure and changeless, blood of Christ, so rich and free, grace of God, so strong and boundless, magnify them all in me. Elizabeth wrote this hymn and her heart's desire was a petition to God. God, magnify your love in me. God, magnify your grace in me. Her prayer through song was that the love of God and the grace of God would saturate her life. The love of God and the grace of God would saturate her character. The love of God and the grace of God would saturate her work. And this woman, who we don't know a whole lot about, we know that she was committed to the work of mission. She loved God to the point that she wanted everyone she encountered to know about this God who was pure and changeless. The key verse for today's lesson is Romans 8 and verse 18. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. Today's affirmation, we feel empowered by the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of suffering, weakness, or loss of direction. Today's reflection is embracing God's process will always transform today's pain into tomorrow's power. You may be going through something today and you may feel that you're in a dark place. You may feel like those gentlemen from Hee Haw that sang gloom, despair, and agony on me. You may feel like things are never going to turn in your favor. You may feel like you can't go on and there's no way that you can continue to go. But God has a purpose and a plan. And his word tells us that the things that we suffer today aren't even worth comparing to the glory that God is going to reveal. If you hang on in there and allow God to complete his process in you, allow God to complete his process through you, allow God to complete his process for you, you'll find yourself standing in the midst of his manifested promise. You'll find yourself standing in the midst of his glory. God has a plan for each and every one of us, not a plan to harm us, but a plan to give us a hope and a future. Believe God's word, stand on God's word, declare God's word and recognize that the Holy Spirit is within us in order to enable us to continue to endure, enable us to take right steps by leading, guiding, and directing us, and will enlighten us to the plan of God in the timing of God. Hang on in there and know that God has a plan for you to be 
his hope dealer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are so thankful that you chose to embrace us. You chose to rescue us from our state of sinfulness. You chose, God, to rescue us out of darkness and to introduce us to your marvelous light. Thank you, Lord, for positioning us with power and authority through your word, God, that we can not only embrace the purpose and the plan that you've established for our lives, God, but we can be deliverers of hope to others as we declare your word and declare our testimony about your word active and engaging in our lives so that others will be drawn to you. God, we bless you for allowing your spirit to work through us, God, to remind us of what you said and then allow us to declare your word so that others can embrace your truth. We thank you for every assignment, God, that you station us in. God, empower us to stand as good soldiers. Empower us to endure the hardships. Empower us, God, to be committed and faithful to all that you've called us to. God, we bless you that you, God, have proclaimed that the things that we endure are nothing compared to what shall be revealed. We bless you for your glory manifesting, God, in our spaces. We bless you for your glory manifesting, God, in our spaces. We bless you, God, for your glory manifesting in our spaces. We bless you, God, for your presence. We bless you for your provision, and we bless you for your protection. There's none like you, God, and we celebrate what you're doing in the earth as we yield ourselves to you. We bless you and we praise you even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Freedom for the future. God has given us hope. Will you choose to embrace the hope of God and become his hope dealer? Thank you for joining Church School Saturday with Lady Angela. This is the sum up. You can join us on Saturdays in the virtual classroom. You can check the link that'll be in the comments after this broadcast has ended. Thank you for joining and blessings.